Thrill Me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. Be one of us. Hello, friends. How you doing? Welcome in to the Slasher Report. I'm Mr. Wonderful, the man drinking out of the CU in the fog. Mug is my buddy, Zach Hilton. Hello, Zachary. Hi. Yes. Thank you, Rob, for sending Brooke this wonderful, wonderful mug that I am using. To be fair, she uses it like this is the first time I've used it in like a week. She uses okay. it all the time. Don't you, Brooke? That's my mug. That's her mug. That's <laughs> hers. <laughs> well, special uh, special voice appearance from uh, Brooke. That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't expect that today. Nice. <laughs> yes, you do. I appreciate you. Um, it's perfectly actually with the Evil Dead conversation that we're bound to have today. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk the original trilogy, the first three movies, and maybe we'll sprinkle in the musical because both Wonderful and me uh, know that musical. He has actually a little more tie to that musical through performers than you'll see. Um, yeah. So before we get into it, there are a couple of quick things we wanted to hit on. Um, Mia Goth has been cast in the upcoming Marvel Studios Blade. And that's kind of a huge like move for me, thinking wise, because it is still in the vein of horror. And Mia Goth through X, through the upcoming Maxine Pearl, like she's kind of become the she's a star. Girl. She is a star. Um, so does this wonderful? My question to you: Does this make this movie like a little more chance to be a horror movie? Yes, I, the moment I saw this casting, I like, I, I was on the phone, I saw it, I was like, bloody disgusting, Mia Goth, Marvel, <gasps> and right. showed Brooke too, and was like, take a peek at this, because yeah, to me, that is, she has carved out a nice little career, uh, especially since X, Pearl, the upcoming Maxine, Infinity Pool, uh, she's, she's in the upcoming, uh, what is it, she's in the... She's in one of those mon uh, Universal monster films coming up, like a Dracula or Fra Frankenstein. She's in the upcoming Frankenstein film as well. So, like, this just continues her resume of why not throw another spooky thing into it? So, yeah, it, right. it to me comes across like I'm still curious if they're going to go R or if they're going to mm -hmm. go PG 13. Um, just because, <sighs> just because of the. Deadpool isn't exactly MCU while it's playing into it. It's not mm -hmm. exactly so you can get away with keeping that R, but MCU main timeline stuff tends to, you know, I mean, we did get a little bit of sex in one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, who knows? Violence, uh, on the whole. Right, right. I, I myself think that it's going to end up being a little more horror than what we're used to. I think with Moon Knight, they kind of dipped their toes. Hell, Werewolf by Night, we got that horror short from Marvel. So yeah. I do feel they're dipping the toes. Yeah. And I think with her being cast in Blade, it's obvious that they're they're really going to try to branch out to other genres and not stick to the same superhero kind of that they know like it seems like marvel's like okay we either do space uh superhero movies um political thrillers and now we're going to do some horror so let's see what happens with that uh going to kind of theme park news ish um it was announced earlier this week that in may Bush Gardens Williamsburg is going to open up Dark Coaster. Now, what's fun about that is that in May, at the end of April, actually, they're starting their Food and Wine Festival. And the map for the Food and Wine Fest leaked. And on that map, it doesn't have, like, Dark Castle coming soon. On the map, it's like, we're open. Come. Um, 
And I think because of that, they were just like, okay, I guess we have to announce it because someone leaked the map. Um, wonderful Food and Wine Festival is a wonderful event that Bush Gardens puts on. But now That's there's fun. a chance to ride a new spooky ride. Does that make you want to possibly go in May? It does. I mean, I've been on the, I got to get back to Bush Gardens this year. Uh, I haven't actually gotten to go since one of the COVID open mm, years. No, and it the, rained. the fake year. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What, are, what are those fake years for them? And it rained. So it kind yeah. of took away some of the fun of some of the rides and things like that. Like, listen, you can, you can enjoy Apollo's, Apollo's chariot, but when it's raining and you're sitting in the front row on Apollo's chariot, uh, right. yeah, that hurts. That hurts a right. lot. <laughs> and that is a right. smooth ride that should not hurt. Uh, no. No. no, unless you're Fabio and it's the first time you're riding it, then, then it's going to hurt. Um, <laughs> really bad. Yeah. I can't Seals wait to get learned yet. Don't fly that route. <laughs> I can't wait to finally get Fabio on this show because you have plugged that moment for him almost yearly on Thrill Me or Hunter. So it's time for this feud to coincide with Thrill Me Games Presents. <laughs> Mayhem, Fabio versus Wonderful. <laughs> oh my God! If that's the Forbidden Door, I'm so ready for my Forbidden Door challenger on that one. Mm. Ah, we've opened mm. the Forbidden Door. Here comes Romance Novel Cover Model Fabio. Find out May sixth if Fabio is going to be a mystery entrant in the yeah, uh, the Mayhem also, games. Well, it would also track because Fabio did play the Pope in Sharknado. Oh, this is this is all coming together for you. You, you <laughs> won't even face him. The... You'll just you'll just ask him questions about Sharknado. Ooh, tell me about Ian Ziering. Oh Ian Ziering, whatever, however the hell you say. Ian, Ian, who gives Ian, a who shit? Gives a shit? <laughs> all right, so I'm excited about this. Dark Coaster's around the corner, and like I've been preaching, it's going to be nice to have a spooky ride outside of Verbolton, because Verbolton does have a little spookiness to it, but it's nice to have a legit spooky ride during Hollow Scream this upcoming season. So I can't wait to cover that ride. All right, so let's get into the main event of the evening. As you can see, we have some... Uh, Evil Dead background going on right now because we're celebrating Evil Dead these past two weeks or these two weeks. I just went to Bruso Rama, which was a blast. If you haven't checked out that vlog on our channel, please go to that. Go to our Instagram, Hunter's Pod. I posted a picture of me and Bruce together. Um, but we wanted to kind of just do a discussion of the original trilogy today: Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and Army of Darkness. And wonderful, what for you? The original Evil Dead, how does it still hold up for you, especially through just those three movies? Is it one that you go to more than the others or have the others kind of taken over that? Or is the original just so classic through the crazy special effects it has, the mood it sets, the horror music, the, the style Sam Raimi films it? Like, what is that movie for you? Okay, oh, so uh, as I there stall, uh, <laughs> as I stall, um, <laughs> hey, Candor and Demon. <laughs> um, so the original to me, uh, I do not watch it as much as Evil Dead Two or mm. Army of Darkness, or for that matter, even Evil Dead Twenty Thirteen which mm -hmm. isn't a slight on it i think it still holds up as just a, a brutal intense film it's just that uh, there's something so magical about evil dead 2 and then like army of darkness is kind of that i just kind of want to go a little more three stooges so mm -hmm. boom let me watch more of a comedy uh right. and and the 2013 one i just kind of find myself i i've watched that more frequently just just because like i, I just it's had the updated. memory this past week yeah it's the updated version i had the memory this past week of going to see it with my dad like taking him to see it in theaters was kind of like that okay yeah maybe i'll rewatch that one that one's actually a lot of fun um right. 
but yeah, I did want to, I wanted to rewatch the, the first one prior to this because it is the one that has been the longest since I've watched it again. Uh, I actually, mm -hmm. it's behind me. It's, it's the only one that I don't have on Blu-ray, but I have the DVD of it. And let's see if I can get this. Do you see uh, what that Blockbuster. is? Yeah. yeah, because this was one of the last films that I rented when Blockbuster existed. Uh, when I was in college, I rented it, and it's a tie-in to what you teased with the musical. Uh, mm -hmm. Because my, I've told this story before, but you know, if no, if you're new to the show, you've never heard it. I actually saw this the original trilogy backwards, and I yep. didn't realize it at the time yeah. um when i was super young army of darkness was like on sci-fi network after school or usa now mm -hmm. one of those weird cable like it was on a cable yep. channel and i just watched it on basic cable and was like that film rocks but had no clue what i watched mm -hmm. then years later turner classic movie was wait one night doing horror films i was watching it and then all of a sudden at like two in the morning they were like and here's the sequel to the film evil dead evil dead 2 and did the whole intro and i watched it and was like that's cool and then the tie into the musical, I had to do a, a paper interview and they were like, it's all three films. And I was like, oh, I've never seen the first one. So I rent, rented it, finally got to watch it, loved it, never returned it to Blockbuster. Blockbuster closed. Mm -hmm. I now well, that's why they closed. <laughs> yeah. That's why they closed. I'm the reason that the Virginia Beach Boulevard Blockbuster doesn't exist anymore and turned into a phone store. <laughs> oh, it's a phone store. I thought it turned into yeah. a UFC gym. Okay. Um, oh no, it's like a T Mobile or something now or a sprint nice. store. Yeah, nice. yeah. 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 Wildly we have the same kind of uh way of seeing it. I saw Army of Darkness first through Sci Fi Channel. Okay. Um, and I absolutely loved it. And one night at Blockbuster, I was going through, and it was during the time when DVDs were starting to, you're able to buy them now. Like I remember going to Target and I bought Mission Impossible 2, Gladiator, and then went to Blockbuster and they had uh, DVDs. And the DVD set that I had, my original Evil Dead, uh, which again, I didn't know was the original to Army of Darkness. Um, it was a plastic DVD like case. So glass kind of case. If I'm right, and if you could pull it down, that Evil Dead poster behind you. Um, yeah, pull that and let me see the cover. That was similar to the cover and the way the cover was, was on the back of it. So glass case, you open, you had the disc that kind of matched the poster but it was just um, Ash standing there with a uh, ax in his hand. Everybody knows the image if you Googled it and you were like, Evil Dead fucking Ash uh, ax. And I was like, oh, this is the guy from Army of Darkness. I'm going to check out this movie. I watched the movie. It was like, oh, it's the prequel. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, this is wild. But, huh? That you saw it as the prequel. You're like, oh, it's the prequel to the film I like. Look at that. Right. They made, they made a sequel. Well, they made a prequel to what I like. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, years later, I saw part two. I And it's kind of funny because I remember as a kid going to the uh, – blockbuster store and going to the horror section and always seeing that one poster where it was the skull with the eyes looking mm -hmm. to the side i remember always seeing that and once i watched this movie i was like oh wait a second it's that movie like that's the sequel to that so then i finally watched evil dead 2 and what i give all the trilogy credit for is always giving you that recap kind of the yeah. recap at the beginning for the two sequels and they kind of fed into each other, but I just enjoy the fact that they did their best. You know, they weren't run by the same company. Like Universal had Army of Darkness, so they had to reshoot some of Evil Dead, which had to be weird with uh, Bridget Fonda as as his girlfriend, who wasn't his girlfriend in the second movie, who three wasn't his girlfriend in the first three movie. Three different versions, baby. Yeah, so it was pretty interesting. Uh, but thinking about Evil Dead 1, I think the movie also is such, as a film lover as we are now, and I'm with you where I don't watch it as often, but there's something about it being an independent film that really sticks out when people talk about like indie movies 
th anything Kevin Smith early like Clerks and then this were the movies that I always like go back to when I think independent film. This Halloween, it's wild to me how these things got made back then. Yeah, uh, I, I I think the same thing because like that's the thing with the first one. Like I think the reason why I more, more do Evil Dead Two and Army of Darkness is because they feed into each other a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, so they they feel more. It feels more like the one and two, which is like weird to say that this is like a one A or a one B or something like that. And, right. And like because you're right. Like they totally did their best. It's the ultimate of independent films. I mean, the origin story of how they even made that it was them making like a 20 minute short film of it and mm -hmm. selling it to people and the, to make the feature length of it. Right. Uh, and then you, they got their feature length and then it did so good that, you know, somebody was like, Hey, you want to kind of make it better? And right. Right. Yeah, sure. Let's make it better. Like, it's weird to think that they got like, that that evil dead 2 is like the third shot of them making the same film in ways right because yeah, 2 is yeah. totally different but it's like the same it starts as the friends going to the woods then it continues as the friends going to the woods in evil dead 1 then it's just ash and his girlfriend going to the woods in evil dead 2 right. but incorporating right. all those things we know and that we loved and then you know army of darkness being it's Hey, we'll pay you to do one, but don't do it in a woods. Oh, well, little did you clearly didn't watch Evil Dead 2 because Ash isn't even in our time anymore. Uh, right. he's back in time. But I yeah, do have another fun. Yeah, I do have another fun story for the first film, though. Um, so mm -hmm. obviously, I notoriously not good with flying. I have to distract mm -hmm. myself, drinks, watch movies, all of that. Back in the days of before we had, uh, you know, our phones and you know, little iPods and iPads and all that, and you, you had to bring your laptop and DVDs if you wanted to watch something personal on the plane. Mm -hmm. Coming back from Las Vegas with some friends, I decided I'll pack Evil Dead for this trip. Like I packed like films like Miracle, uh, Super Troopers, really goofy things and like family things. Evil Dead was the only horror movie I packed because I was like, I'll end up watching this. Mm. Didn't even think about it. Flight coming back from Vegas, just chilling there in my aisle seat, pop open my giant computer. And we're talking the big laptops, not the yeah. little laptops now that are bit, you know. Right. Plop the film in, just sitting back, having a good time, blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, kinky trees happen. And I'm just kind of la, 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 sipping down a Jack and Coke, blah, 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 blah. Woo, this is a great plane ride. I'm. No concern in the world because I'm just watching the evil dead and having some drinks. Blah, 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 blah. By the time we got to um, the second demon and like mm -hmm. stuff coming out of eyes, my friend right. sitting next to me proceeds to do the tap on the shoulder. Hey, what's up? What the fuck are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the evil dead, bro. Why? Look around. And I take a look around. And everybody that's got an aisle seat for like three rows is just like <laughs> in fucking terror looking at my computer screen. My friends across the way are looking at my computer screen as well. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. I, you know what? Maybe this probably was an inappropriate movie for the flight. Probably. But I'm going to, but you know what? We're I got to wrap it up. New York. Like, we're an hour from yeah. JFK. There's like 30 minutes left. Enjoy the rest of the ride, folks. <laughs> I do I do love that the aisle uh, seats were like, is he watching a snuff film? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, 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 what I are we doing? Them, I can imagine what caught their eye was Kinky Trees. And they were like, what is this guy in that mm -hmm. seat watching right now? And then obviously <laughs> from there, it just gets floating people cutting heads open yeah different colors of everything flying everywhere so oh, yeah i bad. love telling that story because that's one of those like because since then i've also been very um i've been very smart about what i watch on movies since then like right, our movies right. on flight since then so i've always kept right. things to like okay jurassic park <laughs> you know that's yeah that's yeah, the yeah, level yeah, yeah. Of violence we can go here <laughs> yeah i'll share that with you guys yeah yeah i did watch um, halloween ends on one flight but i was like eh, that's not there's no nudity there's no the, there's no trees there's, doing things that no you're just trees like, doing some ladies baby yeah we're yeah, just like what am i well this is making me feel uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so Evil Dead 2, I do think is probably weirdly, I do think that's the best version of the, the yeah, of the Sam Raimi trilogy, just because you do get that combination of goofy, you get the horror, and it's blended super well. I may like Army of Darkness. It, it switches back and forth, like which one I like more, only just because, hey, Army of Darkness is technically the first one to me. So it's the one I know most, but also it is just a fun action movie. So we'll get there in a second. But Evil Dead 2 just has a wonderful story of being able to reproduce that first one, like you said, but bring in some new special effects, bring in different actors. I just absolutely adored that one. Greg Nicotero throwing down oh, on yeah. people. God bless you. Uh, Thank you, know. you. I tried to mute it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I think Evil Dead 2 is, I think that is the best out of the original trilogy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just, it really was, they, they figured it out. They figured out the full formula of what makes those films work. And again, it's not to say that the first film wasn't good. Right. Like, right. It, you know, but I'd say the first film is definitely more in the horror category than the horror comedy, even yeah. though there's comedy there, but it definitely leans like, I'd say it's probably like an 85, you know, 15 horror to comedy mm -hmm. where by part two, we're like, what, uh, you know, I don't want to say it's a 50 50 but it's maybe like a 60 i would say 40. i would say 40 percent comedy yeah it's definitely like a 60 40 and then by the time you get the army of darkness it actually kind of flips to 60 comedy 40 horror i feel like the goal for army of darkness was okay evil dead 2 didn't get bruce campbell that action hero status that they mm -hmm. thought it was going to give him and then they were like, okay, we're going to do Army of Darkness, which is pretty much an action. You say 40% horror. I think it's actually like 30% horror, 60% uh, fucking comedy, and then like an abundance of action because he wanted to make this like big epic scale epic mm -hmm. from like the 30s almost. Yeah. Um, and I just feel like the whole goal was we're going to make Bruce Campbell um, an everyday man action hero. We're going to make a Die Hard. We're going to make a um, Terminator with Bruce Campbell going on after this. And it is kind of a shame it didn't go that way. I am very thankful Bruce Campbell has a wonderful career with so many like productions that I love. Briscoe County Jr., Jack of All Trades, the Evil Dead series, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Like, he's continuously been around the scope still, but I do feel like Army of Darkness was the pitch to make him the mainstream action hero. Yeah, I can see that because you also had the Universal backing at that time. Uh, he's, I will never forget that uh, when I showed my dad Evil Dead 2 to lead into mm -hmm. the 2013 film, because right. that, like, and that's the thing too. Like, my dad had never seen any of the Evil Dead films of the original trilogy, but he was, he, well, he was curious to go see the new one with me, or the, I guess now the 10 years ago. Yeah, the, the decade. We'll talk now. about that one next week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I showed him the second one as the hype up. And my mom, I remember her going, why do all those demons want to hurt that handsome fella? Like one of those, <laughs> like, so I get that. Cause like Bruce Campbell uh, at that time, young, handsome, charismatic, yeah. like you, you think chin that. for days. God, that chin. That uh, chin. And you got to see that chin in person. Uh, oh, I uh, shook that man's hand. Uh, uh, mm. And he's so tall that I heard the chin came down to your head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I think you're right on that. And and kind of if you even look like uh, you mentioned uh, Briscoe. Like that's kind yes. of action-y as well. A lot of the stuff. Yeah, and he was in that Burn Notice show. That Burn Notice show was pretty action-packed. Yeah, I mean, he was the supporting cast. Kinda, yeah, he was a supporter. Like, he he was he was right. yeah, he was but he was like what Corbin Burns was on Psych. <laughs> right, 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 right. One hundred percent. That's yeah. a, what a good call of yeah. that. Um, but two USA shows had to drop it. <laughs> had to drop it, baby. Um, I do enjoy me 
the Army of Darkness. I think the quips in that are just still, they still are better than Good, most are said. Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. <laughs> Yo, she bitch. Come get some. <laughs> Let's go. This here is my boomstick. <laughs> Have I ever told you I did that as a monologue in uh, high school? You did not. Yeah, when we did, when I was in drama, we were told we had to do a monologue. So I just learned what that is. And he was like, oh, it's like, yeah, it, it, the time frame had to be 45 seconds to two minutes. And I'm like, well, you're getting 45 seconds. Uh, um, so, <laughs> so I'm going to go to one of my favorite actors who really puts in the work. <laughs> and and I did. I was, I said, I started from when he crawled out of the pit. Oh, where he man. looked at the guy, he's like, yo, your shoelace is untied. <laughs> and right into the primate thing, this is my boomstick. Like, it was awesome. I got an A on that report. That um, awesome. Damn, now yeah. that makes me wish that, um, again, kind of a little tease to the knowing somebody that was in the musical, makes me wish that when I was in that theater class and we did our monologues that he didn't require us to pick some random monologue out of a ton of different plays. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, I ended up doing, I ended up doing some military one and I actually uh, got an A on that and I got credit. Uh, he gave me huge props for starting laying down on the floor and progressively working my way up, which I ripped yeah. off from Marlon Brando from apocalypse. Now. Oh, look at you go. Yeah, I did. Uh, go? Uh, Cause I watched apocalypse now to get into that mono to sidetrack for a second to get into that monologue for being military with like PTSD. And I just mm -hmm. watched Brando's parts when you first meet him and he's laying down and then he gets up and he's putting the water over him. So I did that where I started on the ground with the slow progression. Then I eventually sat up and I eventually just didn't even plan it, but in the monologue, just threw the freaking chair across the room and thought I broke it. <laughs> oh, wow. Cause right. I just got so into it at that point where I was like, Oh man, this is my, uh, I just should have put some cotton balls in my mouth here and been like, yeah, mm -hmm. let me tell you, you know, nothing about Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been theater talk, uh, but, but that's talking the thing. About, we're both theater people. So, you know, well, and not only that, we're moving into theater mm -hmm. because eventually in the mid two thousands off Broadway <laughs> had Evil Dead the Musical. And this thing Cabin was, in the Woods. <laughs> um this thing like went on forever off Broadway and it ended up touring. And eventually the tour was coming to Norfolk, Virginia. And the way that the tour worked is really it was you bought the rights for the play mm -hmm. so locally somebody could do it. And um, locally we did I think it was the Little Theater of Norfolk if, yep. I, if I'm correct uh, yep. they put it on and the thing that I loved most about Evil Dead the musical besides the music because I thought the songs were stellar um, but I loved that it infused the first movie and the second movie like it infused in a way of like we recognize the friends came and you needed that like cast to be there but also we're recognizing this group coming in, uh, coming to the cabin to look for parents, uh, like in part two. So really neat how they infused it. I thought the story wise, it was perfect. Again, the music was stellar. The blood, if you're in the first couple of rows, you got blood now. That, that was my only complaint. And I get we only have so much money at the Little Theater of Norfolk. Um, but like when you see it off Broadway, it's like, oh, chainsaw through a person and like gushes of blood. And the way that the theater of Norfolk did it was like two, two people who weren't on the scene, uh, had like bottles of blood spraying people like uh, running up and down. It works. It works. I thought it was adorable. Yeah. Um, really, like I said, I was there for the music story and like that, but yeah. really, that really fun that. show. Yeah, really fun and, show. And, and the crazy thing about that is what I found out years later is I was just telling you how, when I was telling you how I ended up owning the first film, I told you how at my college, I also mm -hmm. wrote for the school paper and I were, worked at the arts and entertainment section. And I was typically the review guy. I remember mm -hmm. I trashed the film Drill Bit Taylor 
Uh, mm-hmm. I gave it a D minus out of uh, A to F grade. Uh, yeah, dude, I hate that film. I hate that film. Uh, yeah. So one day our teacher came to us and he was like, hey, I know you like scary stuff. Did you know that our very own head of the theater department, Dr. Travis Malone, shout out to him, is going to be Ash in the upcoming Evil Dead musical Dead that's me? coming to town for the Halloween season. And I was like, did not. I would love to talk to him. And I ended up doing the interview with him. And when I told you, and when I told you that story, you were like, get the hell out of here. I was at that show. I saw your theater teacher who yeah. was stupid enough to put you in a co-starring pretty big supporting role in Taming of the Shrew play ash williams <laughs> right right yeah I mean, and he gave me an a for that performance as well so screw that i should have gotten my theater minor i'm so pissed at that ex you should who's probably watching this show right now because she liked our stuff hey thanks for watching hey, thanks. by the way hey, yeah. like this thanks video. for watching <laughs> you can't see me yeah <laughs> <laughs>